What an exciting time this is for Coast to Coast. We have wrangled in one of the biggest fish going around. This is the first time you've been in this room, is it not? It is, first and uh, last time. It's embarrassing for you. <laughs> yeah, Big Yak, what's going on, man? Good, no, going well, guys. Thanks for having me. I uh, went down to go and sort his appearance out yesterday, and I reminded him that he's got a half day today, and he scoffed at me pretty hard. So he's like, Thumper, you don't know what you're talking about. Your schedule's pretty full on. It's more full on than I <laughs> imagine. So what time you get up? What are you doing? Talk to me about why you were so busy and you almost dispatched me over the fence for this request. Yeah, I got a bit of uh, different rehab and um, killer. Our new um, weights coach, the, the Mad Irishman's come across and uh, he looks at things a little bit differently. And at the moment we're starting at six o'clock. So uh, I'm getting in here just before six. It's still pretty dark and uh, I'll get going then. Uh, have Who's a in here break. at six? Uh, the cleaner. Only, only the weirdos, yeah. Only the weird crew. Yeah, the people, weird physios and stuff yeah. doing their gym sessions before Weird physios or uh, people trying to avoid their kids early. So uh, not many. About three of us. But you're, are you up at this time? Was I'm, normally up, I'm up every two hours at the moment. But um, yeah, no, I'm up at early hours anyway. I've always been like that. So for me, it's, uh, it's a no-brainer to come in and start early. But So you're putting them out rather than them putting you out in terms no, of the no, staff. Yeah, I don't work nine to five. No, I think anyone does here actually. So <laughs> start at six to whatever. Well, we might as well touch on it. How is it being a father, mate? How's the kid going? What's, what's life like at home for you? It's good. I guess everyone has their warnings and things about what you need to do and what you need to buy and um, get ready for this. But uh, like anything in life, you just figure it out and it works. Um, he's growing. He's six months at the moment. He's growing a fair bit. He's, I hear he eats an absolute ton. <laughs> he does. He does. <laughs> yeah, it must be the uh, Australian in him that makes him do that. But um, he, um, no, nah, he's a big boy. He's probably the size of a one-year-old at the moment. He's fitting in the big clothes and uh, he's on the move as well. So um, he's, yeah, it's been amazing at home having him there. You having some nappy dramas at the moment, mate? Anything you want to share with the podcast? <laughs> oh, nappy dramas. What have I done? I don't know. I don't think so. A bit of shower time instead of changing nappies? Oh, yeah. If nappies oh, get too no, hard. No, you don't. No, no. no. If nappies get too hard, I just do it the old Fijian style. Just stomp it down the drain, chuck him in the shower with he's, me. He's mashed potatoing. Yeah, the shower waffles. With your foot? Shower waffles, mate. Just put it down the drain and push it down there. I don't have kids, so I don't know if that's acceptable. But I was talking to Jamie <laughs> you, Cripps today. He does the same thing. It's just like... Yeah, you get Cripps to a point, is a bit of a sicko, though. Like. You get to a point where, you know, when it's stuff that comes out of your own kid, it's pretty much yourself anyway. You just, <laughs> you just do it. I'm sure that you've done it a few times. I don't know if I've mashed potato, but I've been in the lows of lows in terms of, um, you know, areas you don't really want to share. Harry told me you've had a few squirting incidents as well, but that's part oh, of it. Oh, I had them all, mate. In the mouth, on the face, everything. Oh, worry, man. man. That's, that's all part of being a father. That's so. what you got to look forward to, Oz. Yeah, no, nah, nah, long way in the future. Any uh, announcements, mate? Are you any children in the way? Or? No, no, no. You we'll break the stuff. You no, break I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> Stop, don't start these rumours. This is okay. not happening. No, Sorry. no, don't have kids. I've got to ask the, the obligatory footy <laughs> question, Nick, and then we'll move on to more yeah. shenanigans. So what's going on? How's the body? Uh, yeah, it's a lot better than what it had been. Uh, I did t- made a few changes to the program, and um, I just gave it a long-term approach. So we said, let's just aim towards the buy. Uh, it's always tough sitting back and watching for, you know, as, as long as I have been already, uh, especially after last year, missing a fair chunk with an injury as well. So, um, yeah, get to the bye and then, you know, have another crack then. So it's um, it's actually turned a corner. I'm, I'm training really well at the moment. And, yeah, fingers crossed the next month or so of, of footy stuff um, builds nicer to get back out in the park. You've had a fair few body dramas, mate. Where does this rate on the, on the pain tolerance level in terms of that sore Achilles? Is it just enough that you feel like it's going to pop and do more damage or is it like this is so painful I can't do these certain manoeuvres? Yeah, it got to the point where just day-to-day things were – what annoyed me and that was probably my test so things like just even walking um, anyone that's had a sore ankle or sore Achilles or something like that it's you know your knee or your upper body injury you sort of can get around but Achilles um, walking up and down stairs just you know holding the little one trying to bounce around and shush him to sleep at 2am when I couldn't do that I said we need to make a bit of a change here and go down a different route and yeah, fingers crossed it. Um, you know, it pays off in the next month or so. What do you like watching footy, big fella? Like you missed yeah. a, a bit of footy when I first got to the club with you, and, and a bit around that time. But how how do you go? Because the last couple of years, touch wood, you've actually been on the field quite a lot. Like I haven't missed much at all. Yeah, I'm not the greatest spectator. I, I like to sit in the team meeting to understand, I guess, structures and things that we're going after and the way we're playing. So I don't. I like to watch footy from a different perspective, not just from a spectator's point of view or as a yeah. fan. I like to watch it and break it down and see why teams are doing this and do that. So whether it's us or another team, I like to sit there and think, you know, what's their game style Mm. and then watch it from that sort of point of view. So for me, I'm not the greatest spectator when it's, you know, a West Coast game. But, yeah, like you said, fingers – unfortunately, I've had to – do a fair few many times. It's a funny one, hey, because I remember last year, like, if you don't go to the meetings during the week, you're watching the game, and you actually don't know what's going on. Yeah. Like, you get caught up like a Nuffy fan. You're like, oh, I have no clue what's happening. You just end up watching the boards. Like, oh, TK's at 30, he's been good. Yeah. Like, rather than when you actually know what's happening. And I found when 
boys play at home, you actually go to the game. Yeah. You can like look at the structures ahead of the ball, behind the ball. Yeah. Whereas on the telly, like they're just obviously showing where the footy is because that's what the, most fans want to see, the broadcast view. Yeah. And you can kind of get caught not knowing what's happening until you come in like today and we do a game review. It's like, oh, that's what happened. That's, that's where when we ro- went yeah. wrong or, or did some good things. Yeah, and I know you said home games is a probably the perfect scenario for it because especially being a senior player, you can go into the meetings at you know, half time. Um, before the game and even after the game and get the sort of stuff as it's going like you said mm. um, and understand what's going on so what are you doing on away games you're playing iso ball and you're like Brit so you get out <laughs> everyone get out yeah time. I watch it on my own I hate watching the people so you'd never see me watching the footy out in the crowd or at a pub or something I, um, I'm a, yeah on my own I don't like people commenting commenting on it or asking questions um, but yeah, that's just that's just my way. I remember seeing Coley in the crowd one day. He was with his family watching a game, and he was watching most of the pavement and his shoes. He just had head in hands. It was the Sydney game last year, and it was just a lot of this. Mm. And I just thought, and it's classic to see teammates watch their fellow teammates go at it. Some have different reactions, and Coley was not enjoying himself. Sure, so. sure he's like that as well. I remember the last home game a few weeks ago. We both obviously injured. Uh, and the players hit in the box at suit at um, at Optus, and we both just stand in the race and watch the footy there because. I guess you don't want to hear the commentary of Yoey and a few others. Well, yeah, you sit in, in the there. players' box and some guys, like, just in nature, some guys are frustrated. They're like, why do you do that? Other guys are saying, yeah. oh, God, look how good Luke Parker is. It's like, I don't want to hear that right no, now. Like, I don't. I don't want to hear about how Cal Mills has had 30 touches yeah. or whatever. And my biggest one is I don't like footy fantasy teams. I don't like boys going, this is good <laughs> for my fantasy. Um, you know, you might have Jeremy Cameron yeah, have yeah. 20 touches and kick five and go, oh, yes, my, my super coach is this. I'm like, no, no, save that for yourself. Oh, he's <laughs> yeah. my captain in my team. I, that's one thing that really irks me. But I don't know. It's a new generation. It's what they do. And, um, yeah, that's footy these days. You've just dropped an accidental back at Subi. Do you miss Subi? Do you miss the Subi? So day? much. Yeah, I drive I passed it into the school and I'm a bit jealous because I actually I have fun at Subi. Yeah, so many memories there. Obviously spending I reckon what, ten years. I spent yeah, a good part of ten years down there. Um and it's been some of my fondest memories. So yeah, I sort of half wish we had a lot of success as well at Subi. So I don't know. There's a lot of good memories. There was a spoon yeah. there though. There was. I remember that. That was that was still a learning experience. I was only young and fresh coming into the, into the side, so um yeah, I still love Subi. The players' lounge was something different. There's way more activity yeah. in the players' lounge because you had to go past it to get to your car as well. And here, it's <laughs> almost like you've got three different areas that you hang, so it's a lot more spread out. I couldn't tell you the last time I've been in the players' lounge. Like I don't yeah. think all year I've been in there. Yeah, no, it's in, it's in a weird position. Like you said, Subi was on the way out, so if guys are going to lunch, you almost catch you on the way through. But even for meetings, you never felt that you're going to miss out on something because someone's always walking in and out of there. Whereas here... Mm. If you sit in that room, you could miss a meeting, you could miss lunch, you could miss a lot of things. So. Well, even the kitchen used to be in the players' lounge. So like yeah. Everyone's in there yeah. cooking up food. Like PlayStation was in there. Everyone's playing that. Yeah. Ping pong table was going yeah. off. The first years having a good crack at pool, ping pong, and some FIFA because I got the time. I got time to yeah. hang around. You know? I guess so. Yeah. You're I just hogwartsing solo player. No, nah, mate. I just be nice. I just remember being at the footy club and every day you're there till six o'clock. It's like I'd rather just hang in the players' lounge and drive home in traffic. Like Time's changed, eh? Now, you yeah, old timer. Yeah, now I want to get out of here. <laughs> uh, get on the way. Speaking of some young blokes, <laughs> <laughs> there's some there's some young ruckmen that are they're going really well. So Bailey Williams obviously is broken into the side this year more consistently. You not being able to be out there, and in the last couple of weeks I think we've seen his trajectory grow. Harry Barnett, young high draft E ruckman, and then Jamo as well. He's had some ankle issues. How do you see your role in, in helping? I suppose mentor develop those boys because at the end of the day they're going to be the future of the. Football club whenever you do move on from here? Yeah, I think it's important. I know a lot of the senior guys in each sort of position, um, you know, help direct and, you know, showcase some of these guys the way, you know, you should play your position. And I, I see that as my role as well. Those guys have different talents and different ways they play. So um, Emu, who's obviously the right coach. Um, who's you know, Emu? Emu is our Ryan Turnbull, obviously former you know, premiership player of this footy club, Ruckman as well. And, um, you know, he brings his strengths and he tells them things that work for him and things that may work for them as well, watches their takes with them. And I jump in on the back end of that as well and, and try and help them. Baz obviously is still growing, he's still young. Um, and I'm a pretty understandable, understanding guy knowing that how long it does take for, for some of the Ruckman to develop. And Yeah, you took, um, hey, you took how long, didn't you? Yeah. Was it third, third uh, game, I'm, was it? I'm second game? Different. Second game, but um, no, no. No, <laughs> oh, no a little bit different. On, no, a little bit different. But, um, you know, himself, Jamo as well, they've been playing different positions up forward on the wing, things like that, down back. Um, and then Harry Barnett, he's, he's probably another one. He's probably one of the pure Ruckman coming through. So um, mm. those other guys, like I said, played numerous amounts of positions, but um, Batman's played, which is Barnett, has played, you know, 
solely in the ruck for most of his junior career. And and he reminds me a bit of Scotty Lysett. I guess he comes from the personality same... Personality-wise. Yeah, Dopey. personality-wise. <laughs> confidence, too. He probably would say that he should be in the side at the moment. So he's got a bit of that, a bit of the Scotty swagger about him, which I don't mind because I'm thinking if this guy wants to play, then you know he's here for the right yeah. reasons. He wants to play footy, um, whether he's ready or not. And um, you know even guys like big Jackie Williams as well. Um, you know He's obviously been injured for the front half of this year, but he's another guy that's played up forward and you know, alongside you, Oz, but mm. I see him as a potential ruckman as well because he's got the smarts around it as well. Yeah. Do you know what the spleen does? He's injured with his uh, cook spleen. Do you know what the spleen does in your body, Nick? I don't know. Just uh, sit you out of footy for a long time. That's about <laughs> it. I don't know. What does it do? We didn't know either. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, we don't know. Doctors. No, no, no. <laughs> I always love asking you, like, just, <laughs> yeah, what's the what's happening in celebrity status world at the moment? Like, <laughs> I love getting stories off here because you're just living different You're the lives. only genuine celebrity. Like, well, you, 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 can't, are, you know, man. I don't, you go and fill up your own car, like, you're doing your own shopping. Like, what's some, <laughs> what's some weird stuff? Like, I was talking to Tommy B. He had his house put. In the newspaper, yeah, it was yeah, it last sucks. year. That sucks, mate. He was so flat about it. I was like, mate, that's yeah. proper Nick Nat areas. Yeah, I had that a couple of years ago. Of course you did. But what, what's going on recently, mate? What sort of celebrity um, you know, issues nah, no you cares. facing that we're not? No one cares about me at the moment. I don't know. I don't, no, I, there was heaps when when Zeke was born, like heaps of stuff. Yeah, that things stuff. like that. Yeah, was, I guess people putting your child out there. Like I was in, at the beach not long ago with with uh, Tommy and Brass actually, and there's a photo in the paper or something of myself and t- Tommy and our kids holding our kids in the water, which. I don't know who's taking that photo, but things like that get out, which I don't know. Most people probably don't think about. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think the kids probably the new aspect. I'm, I'm used to people coming up and asking me for photos and wanting to do some weird things, but your child, like your kids, are sleeping in the pram and people are just lifting up the rug to have a look under and <laughs> oh, 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 do this or like <laughs> random old ladies coming and kissing your kid, like our kids here and kissing him. Like that's areas that you know. The thing is, especially being a child and having the surname, people know it's a bit about your, your, your kid without you actually giving them anything. So mm. it's weird when someone comes up and starts talking to you about your child, knowing their name, knowing how much they weigh, things like that, and you're like, how and, and mm. why? But I'm with you. I, I don't know. It's a, it's just the way of the world. Yeah. It's the way of your world, Nick. Yeah, Basically. the way of my world. All right. So you got your birthday coming up, big fella. May the 4th. Oh, yeah. Love big I Star Wars I didn't realise you were that. Don't give me that. <laughs> so <laughs> did you ever like Star Wars or do you hate, hate the people? Star Wars because of really? that. Yes, I hate it. Did you ever give it a go, though, proper? No, yeah, I gave it a go. No, I don't. I don't hate Star Wars. I just hate that my birthday is on a day that all these people celebrate Star Wars as well, and it's like <laughs> it's seen, about me. No, it's about Hogan. They're hogging the, the celebration. They're taking my day away from me, and I already share it. This is a fun little fact for you. I have a sister, an older sister, and a twin brother, and we all have the same birthday. That's crazy. So I already share. Is that, is that share fair, it. Dinky Dink? Like your sister is the exact same birthday. Yeah. It wasn't like a couple no, days no, before. No. And they're like fourth Ooh. of May. Yeah, yeah. fourth of May. So it's like, so I already share my birthday with two siblings, and now I'm sharing it with all these Star Wars, <laughs> you know, Anakin Skywalker and all this sort of stuff. I'm like, nah, I can't anymore. So, yeah, one one reason I don't like my birthday is that. I'm guessing yeah. this is going to be one of the more meaningless birthdays for you. Like Zeke's along now. Yeah, no one gives a crap. No, yeah. like I'm, this sounds very selfish of me, but people used to come to my house and wanted to come see Nick Nat and there was the hype <laughs> around it. Literally, I'm invisible now. People walk straight through my door, walk past me to go and see the baby. Like I just open the door and like they walk past and I'm like, you know what? That's my life now. So he's living in nor- Nick's living a normal life of what it yeah. feels yeah, like, like to it. be Oscar like Allen yeah. comes in. Like, Why well, don't want to come to see me? Taste it. Yeah. NBA chat. So yeah. you've been following some playoffs, mate. You're a big NBA fan. I am. I am. I am. Who do you support? OKC. Okay, uh, 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 uh. They'll come good. They'll uh. come good. Shay's had a good year. Yeah. I just think the rest of them have a good year too. Um, but they got some good young guys that are you know, not playing at the moment and you know will be playing well. And um, But yeah, I am a big this uh, probably like everyone else. I'm a LeBron follower as well. Mm. Wherever LeBron well, is, met the dude. So you probably got way better reason to be a LeBron fan than any other nuffy around here. Yes, uh, I'll take that. But um, no, I, I just I love LeBron and what he does, and he's one of those talents that you know once he's left the game, people will go, oh, I'm pretty bored now without someone like mm. LeBron. But is Bunga the new LeBron? No, 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 no. Why? Because he's bored and like him, or I don't know. Long, that's about long, it. Longevity. Oh, uh, yeah. Mm. If Bunga could have fought the cryo freeze or the cry, whatever it is, I, it do, I love Bunga. I don't want to disrespect. Who's your LeBron of the AFL then? Like, there is no LeBron of the AFL, but someone who's like similar. I actually think Scott Pender really like for how long he's playing, and he's still like a superstar of the competition. Yeah. But like, no one is at LeBron's level of like. No, no, no. So say if Gary Abbott was still playing today. As he was, then that's the closest thing I could I could think of because he was like, yeah, Gabriel Junior, dominant, probably the best player of like our generation. I mean, yeah. maybe Bud, you know, maybe Bud. 
because he was yeah. one, probably oh, the best. I was like, you just nah, disagree nah, with nah. So maybe again? like Buddy Franklin, because yeah. of how good he is, the best player going around, being the best player for probably 20 years, even yeah. on his day, yeah. like I'd hate to play on Buddy Franklin. Yeah. Because like, he could embarrass you. Yeah, I'm with you. Who do yeah. you want to win now then? The OKC sucks. Um, I... Lakers, mate. Give mm. give LeBron his No, no, no. I don't want Lakers anymore. They had their they had their time a couple of years ago. Um, now nah, give it to Phoenix. Just give it to KD. Just shut some people up. Just give it to Phoenix. Mm. That town needs it. Mm. You can relate with the burner phone activity, getting on and defending yourself online. Yeah. Have you ever thought about doing that? Be honest. Many a time. I got mates and I got family members that do it for me. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Love it. Nah, I catch people. You know what? I'm a bad person like that. I had some guy abuse me really badly. Started this when I hurt my first came out with my Achilles injury. Just got on and Why are they we cop we cop the worst inboxes. Shuey cops the worst too, which are, yeah. we share them with each other. But like some guy and I figured out he worked at a pub. I won't name the pub. Mate, you get some shocking stuff. Like I love it. Yeah, like, we're everyone, gonna get there. I've got a question about that later <sighs> on. So we'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> Mate, is, is any any truth to the fact that you're now a beekeeper? Is that what's going what on? What is going <laughs> on, man? No, I am. I'm. I um. No, I got a few. About 60,000 bees at home. 60,000? Yeah, and a little bee hive, a little home. Couldn't be and, little. Uh, oh, it's, you know, probably four foot off the ground. Because it's quite, I wish I knew more about bees. They're so fascinating. But there's a, it's quite an exercise to get a queen, right? Like to go and purchase a queen. And then yeah. you've got to kind of hope of what hives or swarms come and attach themselves to the queen or something yeah, like that. I bought a whole swarm. So I had a nuke come out and been put in. And normally you just get a quarter of a hive. I've put a full hive in at once. And it just... This sounds bad. I sound like a real weirdo right now. <laughs> but no, I love what it. is no, going on, man? My missus took some photos of me, which I hate, and sent it to like Cripper and Duggar on that, and they've been giving it to me, calling me the honey badger and all this. I, 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 don't, I don't know why. I, I don't know it. why. I okay, it. so but I have a heap of honey. So if you guys want honey, I do forty <laughs> jars every twenty days. You so. do. Yeah, mate. It's, it's, yeah, it's a mate. weird obsession. That's what happens when you become a father. You get boring. You, <laughs> cool. you, write, you, you know what? I look for ideas to get outside the house, get away from those nappies so I'm not stomping poo down the shower. Put one in number 12's looking, mate. I, I like honey. Um, no, I heard you one of those boys laughing at me too. <laughs> no, I would never. I love honey. Uh, quick, so a couple of things. The, the bees don't sting you? Like, or, so I wear thing, a suit. Do you have a suit? <laughs> oh, my God. You wear a suit. Nah, not, you when I'm get, not when I'm harvesting the, the honey, though. I don't. But when I'm checking the frames. you got to. Oh, look at me. No, how yeah. often do you do this? Like how, I'm, like, out, there, like I'm every out there every day having a look. Oh, my look. God, man. But it's got little windows now. It's called a flow hive. So it's actually a pretty wicked setup where you're not having to pick it up and scrape it the old school sort of way. Literally, it's got taps on it. So you just turn the tap. And, and honey can, drips out of it. Drips out. And you, at oh. each frame, you get about seven or eight jars. i got a six frame. Seven framers, sorry. What is going anyway, on? Mate, it's fascinating because like because you can have bees that then just want to leave the queen. They're almost like a gang. So then yeah. they might fly off and just go, we're going to find another queen. Yeah, it's, really? it's very, the, the bee Dude, behavior. Are you finding like bees in the house and stuff? Like, all right, make sure everyone's closing nah, the doors. No, they're good. They've got their little landing little pad where they go in and out of the hive and they just stick to that. And they can go up to 6Ks from your house and come back. But And then the honey is just dependent on what trees are in the area. So you got red gum, you got whatever it is, that will taste <laughs> like that. It's, I want to watch I'm into it, I don't understand I'm, enough about it's this. It's really fascinating. I never did until I met the guy who produces most of the honey here in WA, and mate, he made me an addict. And All right, so I, we're a bee podcast now. Go, so, yeah, besides yeah. from selling jars at the Subia markets of honey, <laughs> post footy, what, 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 what do you what are you thinking? You got some things narrowed down yet? Yeah, I'm I'm actually do doing think? a non-alcoholic beverage um, company. I just uh, I just got Oscar to do a little survey. yeah, did a little survey monkey for him. So, so there, that was um, I'm doing it with a guy out of Sydney uh, named Darcy and, and Jack Redden, actually one of the former players here. Good man. Um, we're doing it together, so it's. Um, yeah, it's called Ulta. Is it just, beer? Nah, it's non-alcoholic, like a seltzer. So you know your white claws and things like that? We're doing that. But we're going to move into beers and, you know, your rosés and wines and stuff later on down the track. But, um, yeah, the the seltzer style in a slimline can is the way we're going to go. We're going to target all the little uh, seltzer drinkers, the cruiser drinkers like yourself. So alcoholic and non-alcoholic, you're nah, going to look going with non-alcoholic. Non-alcoholic. We're going with non-alcoholic. Yeah, we got this thing. Bit stuff. of a gap in the market there, mate. Gap in the market. We, we're using this stuff called Nootropics, which um, you should go home and have a bit of a Google on Nootropics. Mm. Yeah. Um, we're Good for the brain? Doing that. Good for your brain and cognitive stuff. Yeah, there you go. Mm. You're all over it. So. Mm. How do you know it? I don't know. He must be drinking it. Yeah, <laughs> there, there you go. go. He's an investor. <laughs> yeah, there we yeah. go. But yeah, we're targeting a fair few. So, But you can do that on the side, can't you? That's a bit of a side hustle. That's a side hustle. Yeah, it is. So that's something that I'm putting a bit of time into, not all my time. Um, you're an author, mate. You got a couple of book, successful books already out. You got thinking of making a third? Yeah, no, yeah. I actually, my dream just sounds really weird because I'm talking bees and doing all the extremes of things. I, I want a cartoon series. So yeah, um, yeah, we're going to pitch end of this year to a few people. Um, little Nick's, have you got any ideas? Little Nick's big. Yeah, something. I got one. I got one. There little Nick's go. little kid. L- little Nick gets a dog. Yeah. 
<laughs> what happens to the dog? No, no, you oh, can't. no. Oh, no. You can't. No, you that can't. is bad. No. no. <laughs> I, thought oh. I, I thought I'd get some of it. Oh, you got me. No, 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 no. no, no. I, uh, my son really enjoys the book, so I'm sure. Oh, oh, you can't backstep No, now. you can't, mate. That poor dog. Oh, rest in peace, Kendrick. Moving on. Moving on. <laughs> um, no, nah, cartoon series. Let me know if you need a writer, man. I've got some, I got some, creative, uh, some creative minds that could help Here you out. Here we go. All right. Okay, so before we go, um, normally I ask a guest to bring in some content. It's called Rate My Content. Okay. But I didn't tell you to bring anything because you're normally full of content. You don't need me. Have you got oh, anything no. before I plug in? No, I want to hear this. You go. All right. Like, I'm this? sure. Oh, man, why is he so texting me? So it's generally like, what, if anyone's got any good content, so anything As interesting, in content, like anything in, in your mate, life that's really interesting. I, I think, think the B one's pretty. The beekeeper's you're done. A pretty you're awesome. Done. Yeah, content. yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you're, yeah. you're covered, man. You have a spell. Oh, I think this came on. I saw it on socials, but someone said it was on the front bar not not long ago. Oh no! But like, have you guys heard of this one? Like, this is, this is so out there. With the Eagles, we're from the West. To win in the finals is our big test. It's all the Eagles. That much is true, but you ain't no match for a kangaroo. Beware the demons, ha, losing the drag. After all these years, they're gonna take the flag. When the going gets tough, you better watch out. When the finals are here, the cat are out. We love winning football. We love winning. What is that? That's terrible. Oh, I saw this on the socials. This was like in 19, like... 80, 80s, 80s promotional thing. Though. No, like it's they're all lip syncing it. So you got Johnny Who, players. Platton, yeah, they're lip syncing like different captains from all different footy clubs. Yeah, well, like we are the world. They have MJ and the crew doing that stuff. Like, yeah, yeah. Oh Jared God. Healy's doing it. Charity. Um, Johnny Platton's there. I don't know who they got for the Eagles. I couldn't recognise who it was. No, I don't was, know. Was it for charity or no? No, it was yeah. like promotion, like a Fox no, footy no, thing. No, no, yeah. that reminds me of um, Nick Rewalt singing the Saint Kilda song. Oh man, that that's actually not bad. It, you know what? I think. Who was it? Dan Sultan or whoever it was? Someone did something the other day. He was singing on the uh, on the Oval for St Kilda's. I don't know what it was. I was representing some of their past players and stuff on the Oval. And he sounded a bit like the Nick Rewalt skit that he did a few years ago. Yes, I saw that for their anniversary, yeah. right? Yeah. And he came out and played. But I wanted to ask you what that song made me think, because it's cringe when you watch the vision of it. <laughs> I want to see it, yeah. What's, um, what maybe one of the poxiest thing is you've had to do? There would be some shocking stuff that's come from marketing or sport. Oh, or someone's like, mate, you're doing this. Something that's not involving a current sponsor is <sighs> the caveat. I've done a heap. Um, yeah, I figured. I dressed up in a big... Tiger suit and with Curry and someone else in like I raise the money running through the middle of the forest chasing the city collecting money for something must have been for charity but yeah you had that a kit that fit you that That's was crazy cool. yeah so someone was in Rick the Rocks outfit I was mm-hmm. in a big Tiger thing and that was crazy um, what else have I done oh I had an article early days I reckon it was for like the Sunday Times or for West Australian or something and I had this big I was getting drafted when I first got here mm-hmm. and it was about the sweet taste of oh. staying in WA and I had this massive lollipop like a you know those huge oh. ones you get at the Royal Show like oh, massive man. like it's bigger yeah, than my head yeah, yeah, and yeah. I'm sitting on this licking like it. revolving chair looking over my shoulder you probably find it on last oh, and I'm licking it and I've got the little knickknap bowl cut dreadlock thing back and, oh, it's, uh. I look like Grug <laughs> and I, 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 uh, yeah sounds terrific that's one of the worst what's what the you, worst one you've ever you would yeah, no, no. you you have mine. pitched some awful stuff no 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 because I've seen some stuff you wrote a commercial for me once you wrote the Lendy one didn't you yeah I wrote the Lendy one. That wasn't that cringe. That was, that was good. Okay. No, was I'm okay. saying that was good. I'm <laughs> saying. <laughs> what, what are you talking about? <laughs> no. Like, mate, no. uh, I um, I've gotten the Rick the Rock suit once. Like David Hines made me get in it for a, a classroom, and he didn't really explain to me how it was meant to go. And I remember he opened up the lunchbox, and there's like a mouse or a rat, like a. a toy one mm. and obviously and I was like you know thinking on my feet a bit of a train drama queen and I remember being like a big act that I was scared of this thing like I ran and hid in the corner and was like afraid of this thing and then like I thought I nailed it and then afterwards Heinz just pulled me up mate it was the hottest I've ever been in my life in this suit <laughs> in so, the Pilbara we were yeah somewhere up north yeah. like in this suit baking and he's going yeah thumper um you know, mice are actually part of Rick's diet, mate. That's what you got to eat. Oh, oh man. No. These kids yeah. are so confused. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> oh, I'll be better for the next run, David. Oh, yeah. well, I'll see so, you've had one. Uh, I, uh, yeah, I think um, I can now say, because I'm no longer associated with them, but you should do some stuff with Monster Energy and just like they're big about like BMX surfers like wearing snapback hats and stuff and just some oh, of the yeah. photo shoots of me in snapback hats and like I've done some like promotional stuff like oh it's just not very good hold on, hold on. do you have a little monster fridge at home 
Uh, yeah, I used to, yeah. Do you used to get, like, cartons and cartons of Monster? Yeah, yeah. I Why did. didn't you ever share it with us? I did, mate. I brought it in. I can't remember seeing any. Did you see any cans? <laughs> no, mate, they oh, were used no. as, like, pre-drink mixes for, for me. <laughs> That's classic. That could, mate, that could be a spot in the market for you. What? Like, Monster pre-drinkers. Yeah. 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 <laughs> New tropics, mate. Yeah, <laughs> there we go. There we go. We're going against right. Red Bulls. Fan questions, and we're going to get you out of here now, because yeah. uh, you've already had a, a 4 a.m. wake up. No so, worries. from Ty Taker, do you know who that is? Ty Taker. He said, how come you don't come around the 6056 anymore? (laughs) I don't think Ty Taker is from the 6056. (laughs) Who the hell is Ty Taker? It's not like Ty Tuivasa, UFC fighter. Are you not Jenny from the block anymore, man? You forgot where you've come from? I know where I come from, but I was there and I got out of there (laughs) for a reason. (laughs) Tell me last time Sunshine was there. (laughs) <laughs> oh, I was, I was, I was, man. No, I go and pop my head in. I still got family there, so excellent. Yeah, yeah. thought I'd wind you. Uh, I've got one from Reagan, and I know there'd be heaps, but if you just narrow down to one or two, what's the weirdest fan interaction you've had? I suppose you touched on it with oh, your kid, but like, that's weird. Nah, I don't know if I could. Oh, I could probably say this. I was at Aquinas College. Coxie used to run these um, Dean Cox footy camps back in the day. He used to give us. They didn't pay us actually. He just said to come down. <laughs> he should have. I talked to Michelle Cowan now because she used to run it for him. And oh, you you bring in receipts to her, are you? Yeah, yeah. I told her. I said, why did why did we used to do this? She goes, was it West Coast thing? No, it was Coxie. He used to make, you know, five, ten grand off all these kids coming for a two-day camp. <laughs> and she used to run it for him. I was like, fair enough. We didn't get paid. He used to, you know, buy us lunch one day. Anyway, all these kids at Aquinas, you get about 500, 600 kids come down, signing autographs. And one of the mums, very large mum, came out, top off, signed my <laughs> in front of all these kids. And I'm like, I, can't, I didn't know what to say. I'm like... You have no shame. This is public exposure. I don't know what. And I, I was like, what, 18, 19? I don't know if we can play that. Uh, Next question. Uh, so let's go on. This was, yeah, and it was what we touched on earlier. This is from Blake J 2010. He goes, I messaged you, respond. I'm like, have a spell, Blake. But it got me uh, thinking of just how much tripe you in particular or you guys get sent in your inboxes. How many messages from fans that you either look, don't look, that are sitting there in your inbox right now from people either wanting to sledge you, Chat you up. What's the deal? Yeah, I, I get I get hundreds in like, a, in a week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah get hundreds and it's, in a day, man. Yeah, it's kids like, I, and it's bad because I don't read them. I just bulk delete. But a lot of the time, it is kids like, hey, my mates want to see how many footballs I can get to respond, or they'll like a hundred of your photos. So then you have a look on your social media. Um, people hitting you up for tickets or jumpers and things like that, which. I've had for a long time, so I just it sounds bad, but I'll just bulk delete. And sorry if anyone's caught in that space, but no other way to do it though, is there? No, nah, there's no other way. Kids that write into me in my pigeonhole, I'll always have a read of those things. Um, but the other ones, nah. There you go. There's yeah. your access if you want to. Oscar? Love it. Uh, yeah, it happens sometimes. Like the pigeonhole one at the footy club's the best yeah. way. So if you guys, if people want us to want to send in like letters or photos or something that they really want us to see, we will see them. Like we yeah. see every single one that comes through the pigeonhole at the footy club. Uh, here's one from Grayson twenty underscore twenty two. If you could bring back one player from retirement for the rest of the year, who would it be? I'll rephrase the question. Any player. Any player. But I'll I'll rephrase the question. One for on field and one for off field. Ooh. Could bring back any player. On field to come play alongside, yeah, me. in their prime. And, yeah, and then Chris Judd p- is the easiest, most logical one. If you yeah. don't say Juddy, you've got issues. Well, he's not your teammate though, so maybe someone you've played with. Oh, yeah, you were with Cody. Nah, you missed Juddy, him, you? brothers. Oh, you missed him. I played against him. I guess. Um, <laughs> okay, a teammate that I played with. Can't say mm. Coxie because you'd be resting forward to it. Nah, I don't want Coxie. Darren Glass. Yeah, big Darren does. Glass. Bring back Darren Glass. Sit him at full back, and you know. Those other two boys are playing free anyway, TB and Gav. So just getting the lockdown. And um, he was a madman. He was he was my favourite player. And um, off field? Yeah. So some, someone you want around the some club. Room Monday band. to Friday. Um, oh, I would have said Lacra, but no. Lewis Jetta. Jets just had a real cruisy. Mm, jet boy. He made this place fun. Even when we were losing, he made it fun, which I don't know if it's a good thing, but. It's hard to do. Yeah, I miss Jet Boy. Are we a chance to see Jet Boy lace him up for West Coast soon, you reckon? I hope so. I hope Scully playing has. Told a few other players that hey, I'm a chance to play too. Lewis Jetta and Will Schofield back in the team together. Man, yeah, things they, could happen. So the 2019 like Waffle Eagles all over again. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> that scrimmage stuff that we had in the Gold Coast. Those boys again. This is a bit on the serious side, but it's from Chloe Leslie. Who's the one player you're really proud of this season? That could be either on field or off field. Number of ways uh, you can answer him. Yeah, in our team, I think Noah Long. He's yeah, my favorite Longy. player. He's a kid that's come in and. I guess there's been a bit of hype around Elijah and Ruben uh, and a few of the other boys a bit older. Longy's just kind of s- snuck in and just worked hard over preseason. Real quiet kid. He's a sponge, wants to learn. And what he's been able to do, he's quickly become my favourite young player in the team. 
Not alone there, I don't think. Yeah. No, love Longy. One from Liv underscore Flo. What was it like visiting Jerusalem and Israel? Is there anything that shocked you when you had had that visit? That was a couple of years ago now. Yeah, hey? I went on my own. It was just something I wanted to do. Um, go and visit Jerusalem and get to. Uh, I went to Palestine as well and a few other places around there and see the Strip. I did. I did, and it was. Um, How close can you get to it? I saw the Gaza Strip. I went to a town called uh, Beersheba, which there was a battle of Beersheba, actually, as a Australians, it was their most victorious war ever, which, you know, we celebrate this Anzac Day, which is today, but I didn't know anything about that until I went to the Australian War Memorial over there, which is huge. Um, anyway, you could get close enough to see some of the, um, the missiles and that going over, and it goes over a fair bit, and it's craziness, oh. but the reporters that go in there and go, like, I met some Aussie reporters that go in and out every day. They put their life on the line to do that stuff, to put to get a story out there. And they say, say they're relatively safe, which, I don't know, when you're in that job, you probably have to tell yourself you are. But <laughs> for me, I was scared. Now, I was like, you know, you and Rick the Rock with the mouse. I was running away. I was pretty scared. <laughs> but Tel Aviv as a whole was a pretty safe safe place. Israel is one of the best places I've ever been to. Mm-hmm. One, and I say one of the safest places, even though the Middle East has got that thing for being renowned, for being real dangerous, I think it's probably you know top five places I've ever been. Would it ever cross your holiday itinerary, Oz? Yeah, it's a lot of interest. Like, there's a lot of history and heritage with what's going on in that area and it's still developing all the time. But like, it wouldn't be high, high up there. Like, I'm right. still pretty young. Go, mate. I was yeah. young. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. <laughs> like, I, I, I do enjoy like a lot of different parts of Asia. Like, I have a lot of interest. I feel like culturally yeah. they're really different to the Western world. So, like, America would be cool because I love sports and stuff. But I'd also be interested going to China for like a couple of weeks and just seeing yeah. how they live over there. Go to India, like, experience a different part of society. Yeah, Israel's cool. Good, sir. Good, awesome beaches. Love the Perth beaches. You hear that? Interesting. Yeah. So people really? don't think of that side. They think you think desert. You think you yeah. know all this stuff. It's um some of the best coastline in the world. And what was the sea like? You sit on your back floating or I what? Went to the, I went to the Dead Sea and that as well. And um, yeah, You're a big I, boy. What, if it can hold if you, if it up. can hold me, mate, it can hold anything. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Things sinking there, but it was that was an experience too. Jordan Moritz, who's the teammate you've become close with that you didn't see coming? Um, My prediction for that call. Is Cripper? Do you think you'd be this close to Cripper when he first? Yeah, I'm actually pretty close to Cripper. Cripper doesn't give anyone much. No, he doesn't. Very, (laughs) what's the word? You, you'd probably know. Uh, Insular. No, he's not. He's not standoffish. He's just like insular. He's a prick. Yeah, yeah, there you go, yeah. <laughs> Cripper don't like you, Cripper don't like you. Yeah, it takes and him a while. He's only just started like me. Nah, and he's, yeah, and he's, uh, and that's just how he is, and um, I like it. And I think maybe because he likes me, mate, I hope so, yeah. that he's um, taken a warming. But Cripper's probably one of those guys that I've grown really close to and spent a lot of time with because, oh, we do similar things off-field, you know. We, that helps. We yeah. like to go out and shoot and fish and not people do whatever no no just things objects um and he likes doing it too camping so yeah you find a common thing with Cripper and like it and he'll uh, he'll be your best mate all right i've got one from fletch on twitter who says pre-draft for you all the talk was at west coast we're going to take daniel rich or yourself with you both being west australians was it something you talked about much with each other how relieved were you that it didn't end up being melbourne pick one or brizzy pick three and do you still have a relationship with richie now yeah still pretty close to richie um i was actually pretty flat not sorry not, not that i came here no no i was happy i came here but the backstory to this is Richie had won two flags. He was close with uh, the Woodhouse brothers. Trevor's still here doing some rec- recruiting, but his brother Steve as well. And two league flags too. Like two league, league flags, footy yeah, as a youngster. Yeah. And, yeah, he'd, we both trained here at West Coast as a 16-year-old. We trained here for a couple of weeks. And, um, yeah, Richie was the talk of the town. And, um, yeah, Melbourne actually met with me the day before the draft. And I shared a room with Richie. So we both went across to Melbourne for the draft. That's and even more crazy. I yeah. shared a room with him and Melbourne came and um, – met with me and said, yeah, Nick well, gave me the whole kit. I had a Melbourne T-shirt, cap, everything. Oh, my so God. So Richie was there and going, like, man, I remember my mum, Richie's mum were, like, like crying, like, oh, this is cool. My mum was upset because she's like, you're moving to Melbourne, whatever. Next morning, the morning of the draft, I see a photo that night. They went to Jack Watts' house and same. met with Wattsy and did the same sort of thing. And I'm thinking, what's happening here? Like, is this just a ploy? What are they doing? And then that round first – pick went and I wasn't disappointed I didn't go to Melbourne because I wanted to be number one pick number one is number one but I just had already played in my head that I was the number one pick and I was going to move house and all this sort of stuff and then I was more worried like where the hell in the country am I going to next and I thought I was going to go to Brisbane that's what I thought I thought Richie's going to um, to West Coast and I was if I didn't come to West Coast I was half I wanted to stay home mm. I was a real family man I love my family and I was like oh Freo's got to pick a bit later on I think Stephen Hill ended up going that pick and I was like just let me hold on to Frio. <laughs> it's Stephen Hill. I know, Stephen yeah. Hill. And I was have like, you, Have you heard that rap? Nah. 
The Stephen Hill rap? No. I'll send it to you. Oh, there it's we go. One of the old times. It's funny because, like, I remember mine. So I shared a room with Norts. With yeah. Aaron Norton. We went over there and I remember, like, my manager was like, oh, if West Coast don't take you, like, you'll be going away. And then they took Jared Brander. And I was like, oh, oh. sweet. And I, like, they took pig, it, yeah, they yeah. took pig, pig 13. And I was like, oh, sweet. Like, I was stoked to move yeah. away. Like, the uh, draft was in Sydney and I packed all my stuff because I was like, Sydney will take me pig 14 yeah. or the pick after. And so I packed all my stuff. Oh, I'll just go straight there, like yeah. get to know all the boys. And then, yeah, sitting there for the next 30 minutes, there's like heaps of other teams just started picking other guys in front of me, other guys in front of me. And then, yeah, wound out West Coast. But it's funny because I was the same. Once it wasn't, I thought it wasn't going to be West Coast. So I was like, perfect. I can't wait to accept something else and then went full circle. Oh, all right, I'm still staying yeah. here. And it was a weird adjustment after you'd already kind of thought something was going to happen and then yeah. changes your life completely. Oh, yeah. I was that happy when Wush called up. When they called up my name and Wush was there, I went and gave him the biggest hug like five seconds after and I wouldn't let go. I was just like, man, you saved my life. <laughs> <laughs> you saved my life. Yeah. But yeah, Richie, wouldn't. I felt so over Richie too because he was a big Eagles man. About the biggest West Coast supporter you could ever think of. Well, not big yeah. enough because he didn't come uh, back at any stage of his career. Yeah, he used to surf with Chad Fletcher and stuff. And, you know, unlucky Richie. But he loves it over there. He loves Brisbane. One of the final ones from Tommy Atkinson from Seven. You know, Tommy? Yeah. Can you clear up Ryan Daniels' claim that he dominated you on the basketball court for that putrid Channel 7 promo that Go was and shot? Find the, putrid? You know what was putrid? The Oscar pumping up footies in the one. <laughs> no, you were doing right? that with me as well. <laughs> doing it was that. both of us. I was like, no way. Front and centre. They have, uh, speaking of, they have done some stinking stuff. No budget, mate. Low budget, low budget. Yeah, so what happened, mate? No, nah, no, nah, I, I, I broke his ankles. Like, <laughs> Yeah, I broke his ankles. I said, find the tape. I think he talks about it a lot. Ryan Daniels from Channel 7 claims that he probably had a better day than you on, on the, uh, that day. Find, go and find the edits. And, you know, it was actually one of the worst things. The boys still uh, get into me about it. Local park in Mount Lawley. But, um, no, nah, it was – that's just Rhino trying to get his 10 minutes of fame. You listening, <laughs> Rhino, mate? <laughs> Let's, let's run it back. Let's do it again this year. <laughs> you've, had a bit of, you've had a bit of basketball controversy. I remember growing up being a big Eagles fan and you dunking at the Wildcats game. Oh, man. And then that was the biggest thing in the world. And then didn't the club crack it about it? Yeah. yeah oh, my yeah, God. Yeah. I thought it was around during those days. I got in trouble. I thought I was a hero. Oh, my God. Right, we we'll yeah. probably can't talk yeah, about that. Yeah. But, yeah. Mate, you got some good hobs back then. You reckon yeah. you can do that now? No chance. I can't get <laughs> you that can, You can still dunk a basketball, man. I can still dunk, but I can't dunk like that. That's yeah. in Ryan territory at the moment. <laughs> man, I miss those days. Oh, yeah. dear. All right, you got one more or are you dumb? Not done. All right, big fella. Thank Great you, mate. Finally, Thank have you, you guys. Coast to coast. No First of many, mate. We might even have to get you in in the studio again. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Get me back in. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not sure if the pay packet can suffice. <laughs> it isn't, guys. Thanks everyone for joining us. We'll see you next week. Thanks, guys.